Good morning, evening, or afternoon, everybody. It's Kago coming at you with another video. So today, I want to continue our series of why you should do this profession in hardcore. And today, we're going to be talking about tailoring. Now, tailoring is definitely a lot different than engineering because tailoring, one, has a lot of useful stuff. Two, it doesn't depend on a gathering profession to sort of fund it. And three, it is a big... Uh, money maker with the proper recipes and sort of pairings with it so we're definitely going to talk about all of those things but before we get into the video be sure to like comment and subscribe everything you guys do helps my channel grow helps me get discovered and helps me help as many people as possible which is the entire point of my channel so without further ado let's get into the video so the first things that I want to take the time to talk about are going to be bags. Now this is definitely most true on a fresh server or if you're doing solo self found you will find these to be very very helpful in your journey because if you're on a fresh server you're not going to really have bags right there's nothing there nothing created so you can get a ton of use out of some early six slot eight slot 10 slot, 12 slot, and 14 slot bags just progressively as you go across your journey in Azeroth, as well as you can make a ton of gold selling these. I essentially funded my mount on this first character by selling small silk packs, just taking all the silk cloth that I acquired and just turning it into silk bags and selling those. Same with Mage Weave and now same with Rune Cloth bags. I just take all the cloth that I get passively, just make them into bags and sell that as pretty nice and profitable next i want to talk about gearing so there is a ton of great caster gear that you can get from tailoring it primarily focuses on uh capes and cloth gear so you know capes everyone can use um, but the majority of it is going to be priest, mage, warlock for actual gearing. Some of the best gear you can get the higher up is going to be stuff like Dreamweave, as you can see here. You know, this is just a really solid 40 to 45 set. Um, as well as there's a lot of gear that you're able to, if you're not using it, make into things that you can disenchant. Now, when I've talked about sort of my money guides and stuff with telling what you can focus on to make um, some of the biggest items that i like to make for money making here at max level are going to be turned by mage weave into black mage weave headbands and my uh rune cloth into wizard weave turbans those have very nice enchanting mats that sell for a ton of gold and then it's just very profitable sometimes it's even profitable to just buy these mats off the auction house and then turn them into those uh, things and disenchant them for a decent profit. That's always risky, though, because sometimes you can get unlucky when you're DEing, and then you will not profit from that. So as far as gearing goes, there's tons of good gear that you can get once you're silk and higher, and that's really nice from, like, level 28 to all, pretty much all the way up. You can craft yourself some nice tailoring gear. And then if you even if you aren't an enchanter as your second profession in classic you can get a character to level five some people like to do this with their bank tune they'll get it to level five so then even if you just have a tailor on your main and you don't pair it with enchanting you can then tailor up a ton of these things and you can mail it to that uh, bank tune that can then disenchant it because in classic there's no level restriction for disenchanting so disenchanting can be paired very well with tailoring the whole way up and sort of disenchanting a bunch of that stuff next and finally i want to talk about the passive income aspects of tailoring so the biggest income maker that i've had right a lot of success with is moon cloth I've sold five pieces of moon cloth since the servers come up. It has a four day cooldown, but pretty much on cooldown, I go ahead and make it. Uh, the cost to buy it is like 50 silver to one gold for the two fell cloth. And then you can just make a moon cloth, which will sell in around, as you can see, I've sold five varying from 15 gold to 25 gold. So you can average that around 20 gold right now per moon cloth. And on hardcore, that's a lot. I could just, you know. 20 days and i have enough for another character's mount 
um, and that's just with one character. You, any character that's level 35, you can get tailoring to 250, learn the Mooncloth recipe, and have them just essentially serve as Mooncloth boss for you to sort of fund your character's professions if you don't have professions on those characters. It's just something to consider. And if the server that you're on ever goes into TBC, you can carry those bots with you into TBC because you can make it a lot with that. But that's just sort of a little side note. Other forms of passive income, as I mentioned with the gearing stuff and buying those disenchanting them, that is a great way to sort of yield passive income because like you can buy the cloth off the auction house and then you can disenchant them for a decent amount of profit. Um, but another form of passive income is sometimes bolts of all of the bolts sell for profit because people that are like trying to set up those passive um, bots will just buy the bolts because it is way faster for them. So if you're just AFK in the city, Silk is a very popular one to do this with because when you're leveling, most guides tell you you need 800 bolts of Silk Cloth. So sitting there and crafting 800 bolts is a pain, or sorry, you need 800 Silk Cloth for 200 bolts of Silk Cloth. So it's still crafting 200 bolts of Silk Cloth, but Instead of that, a lot of people will just go ahead and buy them. So you can make a lot of passive income just having your character sit there and make bolts of cloth as well. But anyway, guys, that's it for my guide on tailoring. If you think I missed anything, anything you want to add, definitely drop it down below in the comments, and I'll do my best to get back to you. But I really hope this helps you, um, helps you decide if you want to be a tailor or other professions. I personally think the best thing to go with tailoring is going to be enchanting just because tailoring gets its materials from every mob you kill and then you can just sort of craft them into stuff and disenchant them for a profit. I find it to be the best, most self-sustaining sort of uh, profession you can go with. If you're solo self-found, because enchanting gets disqualified because of that because you can't get the enchanting rounds, I would go skinning because some of the things require some leathers. but. Um, if you're not a uh, solo self found, you can just buy the leathers for anything you want to make. They're pretty cheap right now. But anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, I'll see you later. Have a great day. Bye bye. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so, so much for watching. It truly means a lot to me. If you happen to find anyone that you know would also benefit from watching this video, please, please, please share it with them. It helps me out a ton and allows me to keep doing what I love every single day. And that is gaming and sort of helping people any way that I can. So finally, thank you so much and I hope you have a fantastic day. Goodbye.